Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah. Seconds okay, this. Remaining. I'm wondering if Pang Lima still bans out the Faceless Void this. Because Mineski X is not afraid in picking Faceless Void first two. It's a hero that, that Mineski X are comfortable with. Yeah, and it's really strong. I mean, the, the changes to Faceless Void made him viable again in the, in the offline role. I feel like. And the time dilation, it's a spell that enemies are not used to play against. So, yeah, it, it them off guard. And therefore, you just can get like easy wins and stuff like Queen of Pains. You know, when she suddenly can't blink for 18 seconds, she just doesn't expect that. And no. therefore, you can get tons of kills. And also, we have to consider does Pang Nima have to also think about banning Slada or Templar Assassin first? So they're going to go for the Sardar ban band. instead. So this opens up Faceless Void if Mineski wants to pick it up for the first Yeah, m maybe Team Pangdima will snatch it for themselves because they have the first pick. Do you think they'll actually pick up? Probably Ten not, seconds. but you know. I guess it depends <laughs> if you have a draft that's going to go around a Chronosphere. So if you're running maybe. Scar of Mage, Witcher, uh, any heroes that can actually from a Faceless Void Chrono. Yeah, just also Jar could die. Like, it's a really good carry for that, for mm. that regard. To see though, no teams are really made up their mind. So lots of minus minus armor Radiant heroes have been banned out. Mineski banning out the Vengeful Spirit themselves. No Slada, no Bane, and interestingly enough, no lone no lone Druid. Pang Lima did run the lone Druid. Or yes, it was them who ran. It the was lone them druid that straight. ran. Okay, they they were the ones that ran that ugly only. Faceless Void. And it is going to be the Faceless Void. So Pang Lima opening with an Invoker, then into Radiant Faceless Void Gyrocopter. This is as if Mineski said, okay, this is the plan. <laughs> Mind gaming them into minus armor, we open Faceless Void Gyro, we win. This is actually really scary for Pang Lima. I mean, though, Invoker in is Invoker. the worst guy against Faceless Void. Is there anything to dispel the time dilation? I think BKB works. So it would just, Ten would it need a, remaining. I'm wondering, does it need a weak dispel, or does it have to have a strong dispel Five to seconds you know? remaining. Maybe it's your a... subtle works as well, but I'm not it's sure about time. it. Because it's only spell, it's only spell cooldowns, right? It's not items, or is it items as well? And let's take a look. No, it's only spells. Let me just Is that It says check freezing the their cooldowns, so it doesn't specify if it's spells or items. I, I think someone in Twitch chat can sort of let us know. I'm just gonna look Radiant it up. Team ban. Um. Ten seconds remaining. Does not increase or affect the cooldown of Five items seconds remaining. and abilities without a cooldown. Okay. Does affect items? Reserve time. It looks like yes. That? Okay, this spell all of a sudden just sounds really strong. It's twelve. It's, it's twelve seconds on top of any. Wait, wait, wait. When you disable a blink dagger, it's on cooldown, and your time dilation and increase it to twelve seconds. No way. Like... Oh gosh. No. That's quite that scary. Is... This spell is too good. Like, it's not too good, though. I mean, it's it's an AoE, don't forget about that. If it was, like, single cast, maybe it's, it's okay. Mm. Radiant team ban. Gosh. And if you if you also took a look at the, ra at the radius, at 725 radius. Take a look at in-game. Stick your mouse on top of time dilation. The radius on the spell is huge. I actually looked at it the other time and I was thinking, wow, this spell... Radius is a little, little bit too big for my car. Yeah, like, I mean, the duration is 12 seconds and the cooldown is 18 seconds. Five it's seconds like 6 remaining. seconds and it's up again. Yeah, and I didn't do the math, but probably with an Octarine code, you should be able to permanently freeze their cooldowns. 
Uh, okay, you're never going to see Octarine Core on Faceless Void unless you are really desperate and having seconds, consistent really chronosphere and time dilation cooldown. So I don't think Octarine is ever going to be picked back. up unless Winter somehow revolutionizes Octarine Faceless Void. It, very simple. Build Aghanim. Okay, uh, you'll go down to 30.5 seconds of cooldown, so it's not enough. But with the Keeper of the Light, it actually works. With the Keeper of the Light. <laughs> Wait, with the Keeper? Yeah, you, you just need the Keeper of the Light with magic for a sense of 6 seconds. I wonder if Ice Frog is trying to tell us something. Ice Frog, why? Hey, there's a brood mother. Well, the whole idea behind Broodmother in general is Broodmother is supposed to add a distraction to the game. So, for example, if Mineski wants to go for the five-man lineup that we've seen them mostly do the entire series, like entire tournament, Broodmother is one way to sort of disconnect Mineski from doing that, that plan because someone has to consistently deal with the Broodmother. So, and they, mm -hmm. they already picked up their carry as well as their planer. So they, they can't just go for something like an axe and have a good broodmother counter. So they're they kind okay. of stuck with their picks. Yeah, Jairi is okay, but after he gets a couple of items, unless he has to commit a call down to killing broodlings. But who's, what broodmother is going to leave her broodlings in a call down? <laughs> well, I think Flag Cannon hits Ten invisible seconds, units, three. right? I... Uh... Five seconds I don't think so either. Dire two wyverns. They have that hits all. But you don't yeah. want to leave the winter wyvern in lane to deal with the brood mother, though. Because winter wyvern just gets completely annihilated by a brood mother. You can actually turn the broodlings against the brood mother if you really want to. So it sounds well, terrible. Cold and breathe. For winter wyvern gets level six. Mother should be able to solo kill the Winter Wyvern multiple times. Yes, that's the case. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. You do a really gun out the brute. Having a chance. Best to get. See, some people are saying that we're not casting in the client. Yeah, we have casting in the. Client. Just so people know. If you want to watch in the client, go ahead. You can. Yeah, sure. Okay. So just for people that are tuning in, we are we have the lobby pass where we have we're in the casters group. We are not just casting randomly. We're in the client. So if you want to watch in the client. That just said dilation. Ah, oh, sweet. Okay. okay, that's good. This means you can even get a diffuse blade against it. Radiant I'm a big team. fan of diffuse blade on like any anyone. Your support. You have a whole bunch of. Oh, you can I just use the blade. I... I. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure. I don't think so. There's so many mm. other items that outshine it. If you if you picked up diffuser yeah. blade, not for the not for diff, uh, not for the purge, then you're not getting the max value out of it. If you, if it's not purge and the mana drain, why are you picking up diffuser blade? The, the the best item it, in the game is courier. It's... <laughs> Sorry, no, 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 no. A lot of team seconds remaining. There's iron branch is the most cost efficient item in the Five game. You get remaining. one of every single stat for fifty gold. But you only have six. And you can't actually buy twenty million branches unless you build lots what of trees. You could consume them. No. Give a branch. I think you would that would only be viable if you're playing Triumph Protector. How about there's like a tree a tiny version of Triumph Protector, and every time he eats a branch, he gets remaining. extra stats. Sounds cool. 
Five eight hundred branches. Ah. Okay, so let's go. Let's keep on going at the game because we've literally just gone off the rails with random ramblings. So, can you ex <clears throat> can you tell me the mindset behind Mineski's draft right now? Like, what is Mineski planning on doing with these heroes? Uh, do they want to go for five man again, or they have a big team fight? Ten seconds remaining. This might actually be a. A mid lane gyrocopter maybe, with a viper in the safe lane, because the spiderlings, when they try to hit the viper, you just have the corrosive skin passive, so they, they're just going to kill themselves on you. Oh no! Gyrocopter. Solo off lane Sand King. Is it a support faceless void? I'm confused. But no, it's a support, support Sand, King. Sand King. I mean, Sand King with the caustic finale is really good against the spiderling. It can still be a position for Sand King. And still actually deal with the Broodmug pretty well. So I think what they're probably going to do with the lanes is still Faceless Void off lane, Viper mid lane, and then Jari's going to first take the initial farm in that safe lane role, and then they're going to swap it over to the Sand King, who's going to take over to get those levels. Five seconds remaining. Silencer. Oh goodness. Okay, Silencer. This. Good. It's good. It's disrupting like the. AI. They want to disrupt the AoE. All after. Yeah, I guess that it... works. Silencer, if you not con the Chrono, stop the Sand King. Uh, and the Gyrocopter call down. Yeah, and that's what they're playing. It's also good though for Pang Lima because if they want to try and make some plays happen with the Invoker and Juggernaut, then you can sort of fall back to the global silence if things start, you know, things either start going wrong or if you need that extra time to sort of take down the hero before they can cut off. Because Winter Wyvern's one of those heroes where, as a jug, it's actually quite difficult to kill a Wyvern because you're going to rely a lot on your physical damage output. If you Omni Slash, you just go for the Cold Embrace, you take no damage. Spin is the biggest weapon Jug has versus Wyvern. And if you can't spin to kill her, you're not killing the Wyvern. I'm also probably the not gonna... then. That's fine. You're allowed to do meme. You can probably just make lots of memes about it. Just make memes. Nice. Oh, don't don't talk too much in um spectator chat. Admins don't like it. Yeah. It's okay. Nice Fine. team. We we all learn. We all learn. Thirty seconds to battle. Oh god, it's super quiet now. So oh. winter's just gonna stay in the trees and seven XP there, right? Winter is yes. Actually, he's not going to sit in the trees just for EXP, he's just sort of spotting everything out on on the side of Pang Nima. The observer is sort of helping him see where everybody is. That works as well. So it's going to be fine. Winter won't get the rune, but at least he has vision and his observer ward won't be dewatered because Pang Nima doesn't know where it is right now. Are there any... No sentries in the bottom lane, so there was no, there, was, there wasn't even going to be any D wards anyway. Oh no, never mind. I lied. There's one on Zachary. I guess I'll do team intros as well. Started. So, on the side of Pang Nima, up into the top lane, we have Stormlight playing the Broodmother this game instead of a Dark Seal. We've got OD playing on that Invoker. This is an Invoker, not an OD. Thank you very much, Zachary. On the Silence, so that's going to help the Invoker a little bit in the mid lane. And down towards bottom, we've got Zero Attitude on the Juggernaut, another hero that's going to have a lot of attitude and bun. Playing a Rubik, that's not going to make that many buns today. Yeah, and on the side of Manaski X, we're gonna have Winter on the Faceless Void, and we're gonna have Jekko on the Viper, as well as Extinct on the Winter Viper. And we will play the Sanctuary, and Catching Imba will be playing the Carry Gyrocopter. So, so, what are your yeah, thoughts on the lanes so far? Well, I think it's pretty standard lanes. And yeah, no, nothing too crazy coming out. I mean, when Brood is able to, to get her levels, she should be able to dominate her lane. But yeah. 
you know, sometimes you have a really good brute player and like teams do everything to, to adapt to that brute pick and try to, to catch her off guard and get strong lanes against her. But it looks like Maneski, they, they are confident about just outplaying the brute. Yeah, they're actually trying to find the brute. They've got one sentry ward set in the jungle, but unfortunately Stormlight's been on outside of the radius. They can't actually... Once they have an idea as to where the brute is, though, there's dust available on Ninja Boogie, so he's ready to try and catch out the brute. Just so far, Stormlight's been pretty on point with sitting to the very left of the map. I mean, just, you kind of have to set people the first few levels, and then you can uh, get your soul ring and just spam out the, the way. Uh, get your spider army and then have a great game. So, mid lane scenario. It seems that Invoke is doing not that great versus a Viper. This is to be expected. Really surprised that Pang Lima is not doing that much to help out OD in, uh, in this mid lane versus a, a Viper. A lot of teams what have been solving the issue for some invokers is uh, they'll put a Bane mid. Unfortunately, Winter may not die, never mind. It just gets uh, a nice little time walk time out. Time is just way too good. It wasn't dilation, that was just time warp, um, just mitigating all the I'm damage. Sorry, yeah. It's just so yeah. difficult for Pang Nima to kill him or even do damage. Because if he takes a little bit of damage, just time walk. It's just right now is the weakest time for Winter. Because he's only got one point into the time walk. When he once it's maxed out, it's what? Second cooldown? Yeah, seconds. Yeah, so he's seconds. got that freely, which is quite crazy. Do they have some stacks in the Radiant uh, Dark Jungle right now? Doesn't look like it, so Stormsword, he... Um, Stormsword, Sand King, he has nothing to fall back on right now. He's just sapping XP for level 3, but... Won't be the, the fastest of all blink timings. No, I'm just wondering, is he going to be that... Is he gonna just go into the jungle and farm up that blink dagger? Or if he's going to go to the jungle, farm a little bit, but still have a TP rush? An invoker already dies mid. To a viper. Jacko. This is not good if you're paying Nima, because the invoker is supposed to be that tempo controller for them. Yeah, and they even had uh, two fairy fires, so... I'm not sure what happened. So do you think Peng Lima is going to have to bring in a support into the mid lane, or can they sort of leave OD for a little bit, sack him, sack him for maybe the first five minutes, and make sure that Zero Attitude gets those levels? Well, Viper went for the full-on aggressive build with Poison Attack and Nether Toxin, and that means you have to be at max HP pretty much all the time, so that the Nether Toxin bonus damage doesn't kick in. So Invoker has to get a little bit more points in his quest. Oh, Ninja Boogie? And he got level 2 Barrow Strike, so unfortunately couldn't get that onto Joker. I don't think Jacko was in range anyway to try and go for right clicks. He's got Poison... Sorry, Viper Strike. If the Invoker gets a little bit too close, there's a chance that he could potentially just get ultied by the Viper and right click death. Unless he gets some... I don't know, if he goes and gets a point into Ghost Walk already, in case he gets jumped on, which is going to happen at some point. Sit down towards... Sorry, up towards the bottom. Up towards the top. I can't even speak English today. <laughs> Up towards Dark Stormlight is still being pursued by three heroes. No success from Mineski yet in catching the spider. Yeah, I mean, that's at least one good thing. The Brute Mother is soaking up all of the world's um, attention. So at least Invoker is not getting ganked by other heroes. So he has that going for him. And they okay. might want to engage on Viper now as well. They don't they, have the best heroes for actually catching onto Jack. Yeah, they, they don't have a smoke, and thanks to the uh, Radiant of Soul Warp, they should have. Yeah, they spotted the Rubik at least. Since he wasn't smoked. I was trying to gank from the river. Could work. Um, They've got no vision down there. And but it's too no late. Vision. They, they lost vision. Yeah. Oh, they got the lift, but it's too far. And it's too late now. One's taking a lot of damage. Ow. Just go home. Poor Bun. That was unfortunate. I think it's just because they lost their high ground vision there. If they had the high ground vision, then they would have potentially gotten the lift onto Jacko. But now look at Jacko just trying to man fight OD. <laughs> and then even the Sand King is coming. Boogie. Boogieing his way to that mid lane and also taking a bounty rune. Mm -hmm. yeah, still no sticks though for Sand King. Uh, nice. I mean, when you go for the rune, you can 
just stack up the the median camp at least. Here, I, I'm not not sold on that. I think it's fine. He's he's playing more of a proactive tanking. They could get the yeah, yeah, get the yeah. rocket barrage. Oh, it's so close. They need a little bit more. There's no dust. The dust on the Sand King. If they popped the dust, that would have slowed down Stormlight. That was a misplay from Ninja Boogie. He actually came out of the sandstorm because the sandstorm's only doing 20 25 damage a second. Invoker finally got the kill onto the Viper, by the way. We didn't get to see that. I'm hoping, hoping that Music Blade caught it. Well, they got a kill. It was a three man rotation. But at least the Invoker got a kill. I think that was the biggest. Yeah, that, that was important for them as well. And yeah, one thing you, you have to think about when you have a dust, it has a 20% movement speed slow. That's actually really decent for just, you know, that little bit of gold. Wind is dead. Oh, nice, yeah. Some intelligence for Silencer as well, so he's already at 4 intelligence. I mean, for support Silencer, that's just your dream. Fortunately for a faceless void, you know, it's not something that you want to have happen to you because it means that he's losing out on two intelligence. For a baseless void, he has really bad intelligence game. He's got mangoes and everything, fine, but he just has to make sure he doesn't die too much around Sakri because intelligence is quite vital for a hero like Faceless Void acting as the as the initiator. Yeah, he, he's when he doesn't have the mana pool to uh, cast the spells, it's just gonna be tough. But I think Winter will go for an Agathem Sept at some point, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So if we take a look at the CS situation here, eight minutes into the game, we've got Gyrocopter leading the CS chart at 69. I believe some of this is buffered by spiderlings, unless there's no... I guess there are supposed to be some spiderlings here, so I, I presume there is some spider deaths. Followed by Jug, yeah. we're sitting in second place. So it's still good for, for Pagnima, it's just that they would like to be further ahead than this. You know, it's... Yeah, and you know, Duke Mother... A hero who should actually dominate the offlane is behind in CS, like, um, in comparison to the faceless world. Well, I can't blame Stormlight though, he's up against a lane that's consistently trying to harass him like that. Like, Ninja Boogie didn't get the stun there, but they're, they're always trying to kill Stormlight. So every time they find an opportunity, they go for jumps, they pop, not dusts apparently, they pop sentries. And looks like down bottom, they're gonna try and they, go for kill They just Windsor. made a global silence and they Winter have to get him. Yeah, that was really good. That was Winter a very good kill. Yeah, it's another intelligence stone. Uh, yeah, it's not one. So how many intelligences yeah. Winter have now? Still on 20. Still 20, yeah. Didn't he level so, up just now as well? No, he leveled up and he died, so the intelligence he got from leveling up just got completely consumed by the silencer. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's like someone telling you you're dumb every time you die. <laughs> <laughs> you lose brain cells. It's not where you want to be. Look at the positioning of Jacko though. Sitting on the high ground, he's trying to find someone to kill. But OD's sitting in a very, very defensive. Sitting down towards the south, knowing that something's around the corner. Wait, that's face food on Viper. You don't see that very often. It's different, but it helps him when it comes to chase. And I think just because Jacko wants to dominate the mid lane, he wants to out damage and also really hit hard on the invoker. Face boots do. So it means that if OD gets caught, he's not getting away. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's actually 2k gold on the invoker right now, so I think he's gonna go for the Midas. Pick it up real quick. Yeah, yeah I, I, I could he, see a Midas. He's playing Exod Invoker, and Midas is pretty much core on Exod Invoker. Absolutely. So you're spot on. Picks my Midas, and hopefully this is gonna get OD ground as the invoker. Getting those levels and also the injection of gold is going to help him to sort of progress to his next items as well as getting those extra levels to really hit hard early on in the game. Because if you look at Mineski's draft, a lot of the heroes are quite fragile pre-20 minutes in. Winter right now is only sitting at 100 HP, still building towards I presume, which is his standard build. Um, Something has in this room, maybe oh. they can do something with there's, actually, there's too many heroes mid. If you tried to go, you would potentially own life. Big up top is dead though. Stormlight is now backdoor and creeps. Gank 5 smoked up themselves and they tried to go for the sick lane, so they want to gank them. And there's a full. 
I think, think um, yeah. Ember? I think they, they saw him. They shouldn't be able to see them. They are, the, not wait, there, but you're I talking think, about I, catching Ember. I think they um, know that catching Ember is in that area because Rude just passed by, and I think he was standing roughly in the intersection just now. Yeah, they, they have pretty good vision. Do, do you have like the vision hotkey set up? I don't actually. I'm sorry. Hang on. Because no, no problem, but it's like a line like here. They they could see it, so they know gyrocopter is around that area. I see him no, now, though. Uh, He's here too, but I don't think he can save them. Gonna go try for a jump on a storm light, but global silence. They're gonna get in, but Can they get Ninja Boogie as well? He'll be such a nice bonus. Get him, they will. Actually, I think they almost the, did, but the they're gonna finally drop him. Winter, he has to get out of there. He has no chrono. He's fine, but. That was such a good turn of events for Peg Lima to have that ready. Like, Ninja Boogie wasn't expecting the rest of Peg Lima behind them. I mean, it's 11 minutes in and we already saw three um, global silences doing work. So, yeah. Pretty pretty effective early game from the silencer. He's getting tons of intelligence stolen as well. And, yeah, just... You, you need that Dyer's intelligence stone as a silencer, since your ultimate mana cost is so incredibly high. Um, I think two games ago we had a silencer, a support silencer that went directly for refresher off. And at the, he had it at about level 16, <clears throat> but he wasn't actually able to use the uh, double ult with refresher because he didn't have a mana pool to do it. Because he only like, had like on four Zachary. intelligence stone. Yeah, Zachary's dead. He, he stole Chrono? No, he stole Time Dilation, but they get the kill under the silence. I think Gun regrets his decision. Burrow Strike, that's gonna be it. Um, yeah, I don't know if Rubik should have showed his face things. <laughs> I guess he didn't know that Ninja Boogie. Yeah, and Hastings up well for us. This is a really scary thing at the early game. Yeah, Rubik was mainly Dyer's hoping to steal Chronosphere there. Because normally if you're a Rubik, right, you see a Chronosphere thinking, Oh my god, I can steal Chronosphere. And he got time dilation. Oh, the same thing just got tons of blast hits on those spiders. I don't know what you're doing. And he got the deny on the tower as well. Oh my god. That was very nice in Ninja Boogie. Very, very nice play. Oh, uh, Sam King is happy now. Very, very happy set. Actually, how much is his goal? He's only got 600. He's not necessarily the happy set, King. Well, he finished just Tranquil, so he, he has something at least. His country. I like how Ninja Boogie has been playing this set. A lot of Sand Kings that I see, you know, they're greedy, they'll stack for maybe the first six minutes, catch up a blink dagger at about, you know, eight minutes, not helping the team. But Ninja Boogie's putting pressure on the map, he's not being that AFK Sand King, he's moving around, putting some pressure, making them worry that he's their lane. So even though he's not got that early blink, he's at least helping the team out, put pressure on the Pang Nima, whether it be from movements or actual kills. Yeah, you can't go greedy and jungle against the brood and like sacrifice your safe land. Oh, like... slash. Oh, oh Jacko, beautiful curse. Actually, I think this may kill him though. Jacko, they get the they get the Rubik in the meantime. OD goes straight for Ghost Walk. They're gonna chase after Sakri. There's also gonna be a beautiful jump in by Ninja Boogie. Winter's Curse. Um, Winter's Curse doesn't do the same thing, Extinct. But uh, I hope you learned from from that experience. They still get four kills and Mineski X lose nothing. Yeah, and Bakma didn't even need to pop her mech there. Top tower is under attack. That says something you don't have to pop mech during a team fight. Middle tower is under like, attack. This was a four-man gank Radiant and Bakma was just like, what happens? I don't care. Don't like try to go for a push up top, but the Sand King is being super obnoxious. He's just sitting in the lane, sandstorming. And you don't want to walk into that if you're a brood, because you're going to lose loads Radiant's of HP on your idlings. So... This is what Mineski is just going to fall back to. They're going to have the Sand King be that hero to sort of defend against the Storm. If they're going to play around like this. I'm all, I'm absolutely happy with this part of Mineski X having that one support or position four that can keep a brood mother at bay. Yeah, and the thing is, he's good at defending, but he also stays safe all the time because he he has a sandstorm to be invisible and the ball strike to get out if he if he's getting attacked. But it's not like you know, so you're something like a keeper of the light that just keeps spamming illuminate, and once you like make a little bit of miss movement, you're dead. Your attitude is dead. You have to commit the chronosphere. They use time dilation. Did global silence get? Popped? Um, no, no, it's still on cooldown. No. I saw them silence and I was wondering, was that global silence or was it was it last word? It was last word. So, all right. 
15 minutes in. Aifa and Jug are equally at the top of the net worth, followed by Jug, who's behind by about 1.5k, more or less. Lima aren't out of it though, they definitely have a chance back in the game. I think at this point they just have to find an opportunity to get some kills on the nest. Because a lot of the game has been dictated by the Dyer, because they're always the ones actively moving around. Aside from the couple of times when Pang Nima tried to go for their own kills. Yeah, when they have Global Silence up, they, they can be more aggressive, but once it's down, they, they kind of have to play a passive game. Yeah. And since the Wipeout gank didn't work out on the mid lane, they feel a little bit scared. I'd be hesitant as well, thinking that there's always going to be someone behind Heroes and Menace DX. So, OD, our Invoker, is still sitting on his Midas. He's got a Sage's Mask, so does this look like a Orchid? Yule Scepter. Is it Yule um, oh, Yeah, okay. since you don't have many points in Vex, you um, don't have lots of Tornado duration, oh, so you light? use the Yules to set up your um, Meteor and Sunstrike. Ah, uh, okay. Silencer is in the top lane. I think they were gonna try and kill Stormlight. But yeah, I can agree with you. God, I'm I'm so not used to casting Invoker yet. I see him a lot in okay. games, I'm just not used to casting. Oh yeah, and uh, the other thing is um Wex gives movement speed, but since you're going cross exot, you also benefit yeah. a lot from the plus movement speed. Because Invoker is a slow hero overall. I'm surprised he didn't go for phase boots yet. I thought he would have at least gone uh -huh. for phase boots for some extra damage and movement. Yeah, face boots is kind of nice. The thing is, um, you get tons of plus damage with the x orbs, and therefore you actually want to get a little bit more attack speed to increase oh, Ninja your Oh, He's so dead. He's gonna lose intelligence. Minus two. Oh, so, uh, I feel like uh, Portraits is a little bit better on x and Walker. Sometimes <laughs> you can go for Boots of Trouble as well, but yeah. Look at Kichu Imba, who was gonna come in from the river for another game. Sand and Yasha as well, so the gyrocopter is looking really good for farm. Is there anything interesting coming up soon on these heroes? Uh, just to finish yours for Invoker. I think that's pretty much it. And how about Dragon the blade of alacrity? How about the blade of alacrity on the faceless void? Is this supposed to be a Yasha? Mm -hmm. Maybe the Aghanims build up. I think if it's Aghanims, he would have gone for point booster first. I mean, with uh, Blade of Alacrity, you can farm faster. And I mean, it's winter. I suppose so. In, in, in the other games, you saw him, he was guessing the his own power, so... Those yeah, last he, games, he yeah, they, the they dominated the games. This one's much more even. Yeah, definitely. It looks like we're gonna have smoke up top of Mineski. Looking to kill Stormlight again. Now I'm wondering if he knows that they're coming for him. I, I think he's smelling yeah. it. Oh, the sentry ward spotted him out Ooh, and immediate chrono. Yeah, he, he's dead. Just and they're even gonna get all the spider leaves for extinct. Oh my god. One spider is so bad. Only one? Do you know how many yeah. spiderlings there? That was probably twenty spiderlings that not even twenty, at least twelve. Since you cast the splinter blast on one of them, um that one's gonna survive, maybe. One survivor. They're all very fat looking spiders though. If there's one spiderling, it, it will multiply itself a thousand times and then come back and kill you all and over again. Oh god, that towers sounds towers terrifying. Dire structures are I mean, that's what, what's Root Mother about, right? Well, Some she's one attack. big fat spider. This Radiant one's just a tiny one. In the middle lane, we're gonna have a bit of a trade as up top is being taken down by Kichi, Imba, and Jacker, but they're gonna TP Radiant in mid. Tower has dropped though, attack. and there's gonna be the Global Silence. Winter immediately dropping as OD Radiant goes straight for the combo. I think that was a Winter's Curse that's stolen by Bun. Thrown out onto Ninja Boogie, does absolutely nothing. Jacker's gonna try and finish up a hero, gets the Silencer at least, and now everyone on Pang Nima needs to retreat immediately. A TPR from Zero Light Attitude, no one on Mineski can deal with him. One for one, Silencer for a Faceless Void, big win for Pang. Yeah, and more intelligence don't, right? I looking at Faceless Void, yeah. I mean, since, since level 6, he only gained 4 more intelligence from leveling up. Because he's been dying a lot to Silencer. And this will hurt him really much. I mean, he, he skilled the level 2 Chroma Spear, and that means the mana cost increased by a lot. Hmm. 
It's rather interesting. Why do you think he's gone for the another, the extra point into Thermosphere? I think he could have just kept it level 1 if he's struggling mana cost. Oh, wait, he doesn't have plus stats, Adam, right? Okay, he actually got one point in the stats to get my intelligence. It's not much, though. It's 225 mana cost. Yeah. The next only, point is going to be critical. Only over. adding half a second. If he, if he had Ags, I can understand why you would want to, you know, add another point in because you get the extra duration. But this is quite pitiful. Right? It's not bad. It's just going to be I more mean, difficult. You, you reduce the cooldown as well by 15 seconds, so, so it's not bad. Uh, that's true, I suppose, in return for the mana cost. Circle. Oh, never mind. They TP down bottom. Thing. Okay, don't want to go. Harry, do you see okay, for me? Looks like it actually might be a Yasha. Oh, oh god, that ninja Sanky boogie regrets his decision. Oh my gosh. Roast and Scorpion. That was actually out of range for the intelligence deal. No. Oh no. Some Famous it. boss, boys. He's got 14 intelligence, though. This guy is smart. So. What, what item do you want to see on the silence? Is just a casual refresher rush? On the silencer? Yeah. My ideal situation for any silencer game is getting a refresher roll, like you said. Just having the double silence, meaning even though if anyone on Mineski has a Yules or a BKB, you still get the second layer of silence. Which will literally melt their team. I think my only problem right now is that Sakri doesn't have the map pool to sustain a refresher double ult unless he keeps it at the global silence at level 1 just to have the cheaper mana cost. Because obviously if you level it up you're adding an extra buttload of mana cost to global silence. Even though you okay. only have one, sec one extra second of duration. He picked up a cloak so do you think it's gonna be a glimmer cape or maybe an ether lance? I don't think Aether Lens is that great for Silencer, unless he thinks that curse, that, uh, that Arcane Curse, as well as the last word, is having that much impact. So I think it's a Glimmer Cape, just to reduce some of the magic damage coming out for a minute. Because there's a Gyrocopter and a Sand King on the same. Yeah, but they already have like two invisible heroes, so getting, getting another invisibility item, I'm not sure if it's worth. Uh, yeah. There's always going to be situations they'll be used. Like sometimes it's not for the invisibility; it's just the extra magic resist you're after. Yeah, you're right. When you glimmer someone who's in a chronosphere, you get um, the magic resistance against epicenter that's going to be cast and stuff like that. Yeah, so it's not a bad item. It's just not effective like it normally would. So we've got and... a smoke. Where do you think they're going? I don't know, maybe they, they wanted to pick off the Gyrocopter because he was from the mid lane. But... Oh, Pang Lima. The smoke Nasty versus smoke. Who's gonna, gonna go in well. first? There's a global silence. Winter came into the tree line. He didn't pop the chrono though. Well. They, they can't find him. There's an Epi on the high ground. Ninja Boogie coming in. Only getting a one man Epi onto Bun. That's not the ideal Epi, but they still get the one hero pick off. And everyone on Pang Lima just retreats. Remember for both sides though. There was no um, chrono, did, did, but there was did global. Did you catch the Omni Slash? I did not catch the Omni Slash. Because died, I though. Did, yeah, and nobody really took damage. I think it was just a oh, Invoke is dead. Dodge. Invoke is dead. GG. Oh, and they're gonna get another one in the Silent Star Bash. Can we get the Bash? Oh, Chrono! Oh, it's too late! It's missed! <laughs> oh, man. That's unfortunate. At least they're getting something. So they get a T2 tower. Does, brood, oh. does the Broodmother get a tower up top? Are they close to getting? No. Two Ember comes in and immediately flax the Spiderlings. All the Spider Riots died, but the Spiderlings are too tanky. Actually, could she Ember gotta be careful? Uh, never mind, Jog just TP's out. Well, it would have been good if they... Oh, pops the BKB! Premature BKB! That's huge for Brood. To get yeah. the Gyro to waste I mean... a BKB like that. They can get the spiderlings, but trading the BKB charge just for that little bit, I mean, that's really great. If you're Stormlight, you are clapping your hands thinking, well, I did it boys, 10 second BKB down drain. And Jara is Definitely. probably not too happy about it. Um, I really like the Manta style pickup on the Jacker, because illusions get your passives, and that means they gonna benefit from the corrosive Stygian as well as the Nether Toxin bonus damage. <laughs> 
And yeah, this is just really strong overall for for killing squishier guys like Rubik and Silencer. And also having mental illusions against Omni Slash is also just nice to have. So I wonder what the game plan is now for both teams. It's almost 30 minutes in. I think Roshan is going to be a huge factor now. He's already, like someone's already attempted to try and kill Roshan. But both teams are going to have to try and secure the Rosh pit. And unless someone sneaks it. Juggernaut can relatively easily sneak, considering the items he's gone for. Yeah, and uh, I feel like Juggernaut, he's just happy to farm up until he's 6 slotted and then he should start the habit fighting. Oh god, Global Silence, Jacko, Omni Slash as well, securing the kill on the Viper. Huge commitment though, Extinct just going for a straight Winter's Curse Ooh, to keep Zero Winter Attitude curse. in place, but there's this Silence, there's gonna be a Chrono as well to keep them in place, Zero Attitude should be dropping very shortly, goes straight for the spin, he's not dead yet, Ninja Boogie wasn't able to really take alive. anything down. Yeah, they still he's managed here. to keep him alive. I actually have to buy back on the Viper. Is Winter, Winter should be I don't... Oh, he dies! Oh my goodness! Winter dies, Rubik dies, there was a buyback on the Viper. This is a huge win if you hang Nima. You force a buyback on the Viper, you get the gyro, and you get a, you get the face. That's all cause dead. And then yeah, Rubik takes the tower up top. Look at Stormlight, he's thinking, wow, I got a free tower, let's do this. And then he's running away because he's too low HP. Yeah, he so killed someone. at least free tower damage. And since the Hanson was actually the, the one who killed Winter, it didn't matter that he was out of the usual intelligence steel range, he still gets the intelligence. Then he's the guy who gets the kill. 18. How, how much Winter? Winter has 22. Okay, he has 33 intelligence at level 11. He actually went down in terms of intelligence since we last checked it. It was 20, uh, least... but that was level 6. <laughs> yeah, he had 20 base intelligence at level 6. And... Oh my goodness. Look, this is with his strength treads. He has 22 intelligence plus 2. He has to change to int treads to have a decent mana pool. Yeah, and when, when he actually levels up his Chronosphere another time, he won't be able to time dilate into Chronosphere. He doesn't have the mana proof for it. No, he won't. Oh, this game is going downhill for the for the Faceless Void pick, so all of a sudden this, this Silencer pick is just completely destroying Faceless Void, because he doesn't have enough <laughs> mana to cast spells. <laughs> Not a good game. Not a good game at all. Aegis should be pretty easily here for a Mineski, unless they can't well, take it down they, in time. They spotted off the, the erosion attempt. They might be able to fight, but Global Silence, it's up in six seconds. They can fight. There's no win to, there's no win to Wyvern either. Extinct TP'd up top to deal with the Brood. So there's only going to be a four versus four scenario, and this is ideal for Pang Nima. So Aegis has been taking Chrono straight onto Zero Attitude. Global Silence and the BKB has been popped. They can't kill Zero Attitude. This guy is too tanky on these players as well. Onto the illusions on the high ground. He has to man fight Jacko, has to TP out. Zero Attitude should be fine. They get the Silence to kill and the Invoker kill. Okay, that looked awful for Mineski, and then they just turned it around. Oh, they, they were just really lucky that Juggernaut jumped uphill to the Viper Illusions and then actually just hit the Viper Illusions while Omni slashing. That was so unfortunate for the Juggernaut. I, I looked and I was thinking, wow, he must be super disappointed with this job. Oh my gosh. So what happened with the rest of the fight? Did the, Was it just Silencer and Voker without a frontliner dead? Um, I, I just saw Juggernaut getting caught out and then Omni slashing after the Chronosphere. And yeah, since Epicenter was used, I think it was just the Sam King who did tons of damage with the Epicenter to Invoker as well as Silencer. Tower is under attack. And yeah, therefore made the fight easier for them. Now it looks like we're gonna have a little bottom push here by Pitcher Ember by himself. No one's really gonna defend the tower. We've got Envy sitting in the backside with the Barrow Strike ready. Wait, We're there's sort of hesitating. no cross stuff on the Vigil's side of Mineski, right? Is under no. So maybe it wasn't actually intended for Viper to go uphill. Maybe he just meant her and pushed, pushed himself upward. You mean the Viper? The Viper, yeah, I'm sorry. Alright. I'm not too sure. I don't think so. Accidentally manted on the high ground. I don't think it was. I don't think unless he was. Um, but how, how did he get up there? Unless Maybe Invoker Rubik? pushed him up. He yeah, may have been deafening Rubik blasted deafening up. Blast or the, the talent kinesis, yes. I didn't get to see why I was on high ground. I was busy focusing on the chronosphere. Bad cast. I'm sorry. 
Sorry, mm, friends. Thanking, it looks like he's going for Yule Scepter after his Ether Lens. How do you like that choice? The Lens on a Ruby. Well, it increases the spell steal range, so he doesn't have to get in the middle of the fight to steal spells. I'm it talking about Thanking. Hold on, Thanking. Sorry, what's from here? No problem. Thanking, Barry Strike range, and that, that's it. It's just the extra Barry Strike range and the Blink range as well. Yeah, but um, now the Yule Scepter after the Ether Lens, because, you know, with the Agonim Scepter you get the oh, double- Oh, Stop Might's dead. Oh, BKB, TC. Oh, not even the TP, just fighting. It might be fine, Actually yeah, gets just kill to kill on the Winter. Void. Okay, I thanks, think- Thanks to the Sunstrike, I mean, it's 475 pure damage. Winter's not had the game of his life. Sitting on 0 5 <laughs> This is a hard game. They still know the brutes here. I think I might should leave. He knows that there's a load of heroes and there's gem on the wyvern, so the moment they see the brood, Stormlight's stuck on the low ground, Barry strikes there, he's stuck on the hill! Okay, this should be it for Stormlight, he's dead. Unless he TPs out. You TP's out. There's no more bottle strike, right? Oh, it's oh, unfortunate. Jeez. And all of a sudden, down bottom, the rest of Pangnema's gonna go for a push as well. Oh, blink forward by the Invoker, gonna throw the combo onto the fire for Manta Styles, and Jackery taking so much damage. Oh, oh the unlucky bounces not, again. That was, not the, that was not the play. Global Silence, they're gonna jump onto Ninja Boogie, no? Okay, they're TPing out. Global Silence, they get the kill, they TP out. Oh, Kronos is so late again! Again? Winter, like, Winter. oh, dude, he's so sad. This is, this is a game. We play with shots. If winter misses a cruise for you, take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink alcohol, so I don't mind. Oh my goodness. That's the second time this game. This is probably thinking, what's wrong with me today? Well, oh. not today, just this game. Like, the other games were fine, but... Yeah, that's true. Maybe it's the silencer pick, you know? He, he just lost all of his intelligence. No. Now he's not smart enough to play the hero anymore. Oh, well, let's take a look at the net worth, because we really haven't been taking a look at net worth as well as levels. Net worth, it's still even. Mineski is supposed to be the team ahead, but it's sort of still teetering toward the middle line, where Pang Lima's just saying, okay, the game's not that far ahead for you guys, we're still okay. So this is bad news if you're a Mineski fan, knowing that the graphs is indecisive in which way it wants to go. EXP is still an advantage for Mineski, so they are ahead in terms of levels. <laughs> Yeah, just Four. Off. Well, they find enough the brood, but look middle. Everyone puts energy into killing brood, then they have to defend the middle tower, and it's just dropping too quickly. Oh, they spot the heroes out, and it looks like Winter's not unable to get anything done. As um, it's gonna be the bun taken down. They're gonna try and finish him off though with the meat, with the meat ball. Link they forward have to into the now. Oh, dude, we, as well. yeah, he is dead. Unless he just buys some time, but he's dead. Cow's gonna drop. Oh, one more hit! One more hit! Invoker gets it! Dyer's middle tower has fallen. I feel like... Oh, Silence will suck around. Juggernaut is ch chickening out a little bit too fast. No, I don't think it's... I don't think this is chickening out too fast. It's the team not reacting appropriately to Desky. Because even though they're, you know, they're in a decent position, they're still not that strong. They don't have a frontliner, they're supposed to catch Mineski off guard without the global silence, and there was no global silence because there was no mana on the silencer. Well, the thing is, Juggernaut, he has Sanjin, Yasha, and Scotty. He should be tanky enough to be the frontliner. Like... Pushing top instead, so this might force Radiant's them back. Because tower, tower push for Mineski, it's Radiant okay, but it's not amazing. The Jug has Manta style, he can probably outpush some of these heroes. Silence is back, they're gonna try and buy time, maybe they can go for a positive trade. Half HP on the tower, Kachi Ember's still hanging around, he's got BKB. They TP back Jacko, so Jug is probably gonna TP home. Yeah, and, and they, yeah, they just disengage. Yeah. So the push so doesn't even Ch happen. Check him out, boss. Like, okay, brute mother's dead. I'm gonna have to split push now. We're just changing the roles around, saying, okay, brute, you can push. Okay, jug, you can push. Okay, brute, you're back to pushing duty. Yeah, brute can't really t uh, too much. I mean, yes, she has a BKB, but still, I feel like. Look how sneak Maneski is. Look, they see the Rubik bun. Dressed in buns. Oh god. I mean, still, that, that's an epicenter commitment just for Rubik. I think they're fine with that. The cooldown for epicenter is not that long. So I think for Menace, you just to grab that Rubik kill means that Panglima won't have their four hero lineup to go for any sort of plays. 
Because Brood's never been with the team at that time. Brood's just been pushed. So if you yeah. can get rid of one of the core four-man heroes, then it's going to make Panglima hesitant to go and fight Mineski five on five on three. Oh, double damage found by Sakri. Double damage. It looks like that they're, they're going to hunt for the brute again. They have to be careful. Who has the jump? Okay, no one has the jump right now. It's looking rough. Juggernaut has 3k gold in the bank now. I think he should go for the Abyssal Blade. So, so first getting the Bastion and then completing the Abyssal Blade. Like he needs more right click damage and getting getting some Bash lockdown is also pretty nice. I'm wondering, what are your thoughts on the Juggernaut potentially picking up a Blink Ags? Because it he acts as another way to initiate into Mineski. So if they try well, and jump onto the Juggernaut, he can he can just go into Omni Slash, and that's a huge duration where he's just going to be hitting heroes or illusions. Or illusions, and then it's a singled out illusion that dies, and then the Omni Slash is over. And so I, I don't think he wants to gamble it again. Not with the Omni Slash luck that he had this game. Not Maybe bad. he has to get an MKB though for the Gyrocopter. Yeah, I wouldn't mind with MKB. I still agree with the Abyssal Blade. Abyssal Blade would still be a great item for Jug. So if it, if he jumps on anyone, he can just lock them down 100% and chop them up. Yeah, definitely. So, but now it just seems that Peng Lima is sort of waiting. They're biding their time, waiting for the opening that Mineski is them. They're hoping that they're going to give them that opening. Doesn't yep. seem like that's going to happen, though. The problem with the brute right now, um, the lane is pretty much at their base, and she was already forced to put down a net close to her base. You know, removing one of her other nets. And yeah, you, you never want to be at that place as a brute. So they they did a good sub, a job at zoning her. Yeah, there's also Satanic just picked up on the gyro. So gyro is now starting to really scale into the late game as a carry. Kitchen Ember is gonna have life steal, evasion. He's gonna right click hard. I don't think he. That hard to be honest. He could hit a lot harder than this, but considering the position that he's in and how the game has went, he's doing very well for farming. Yeah. Invoker probably has to. Oh, he definitely has to get his Aghanim set, but he doesn't have that right now. He's gonna have to make a decision. That he needs. I don't know if you want to go for Aghanim Scepter there. You're still going up against the Bliss Void with the 12 second time dilation. Yeah, but he he's able to dispel it with the yields on himself, and still like you you need to be able to use your spells. I would rather if he picked up a BKB this game, then he can save the yules for some. Probably yeah. So then, even epicenter is not going to be a problem for the invoker because this epi is it's not buffed up yet by a veil or a aghanim scepter, but it might very well be. In the future, because the little sankings. Oh, Agon Scepter is not buffing up the episode anymore. You get the double bar strike range. Re they changed that too. Yeah, you get double range on bar strike, and with the ether, ether lens, you actually don't get two hundred but four hundred increased range. The bar strike gets, goes like across the half of the screen. I don't even know if that's good. If they increase the the width, then it'll be better. Global silence. Well, oh it... no, they wasted global silence. They thought they were in the Roche pit. Oh no. Okay, and the that's... other thing is, um, Bow Strike will now play Caustic Finale to heroes as well. So you just have to Bow Strike them and they will get the slow as well as. Oh. This is Roche attempt from Mineski and they don't have to worry about global silence anymore. That was such a misplay from Panglima. Yeah. What was it? Just a misclick maybe? I don't think so, because Jug just went into the Roche Pit, and they were expecting Mineski to be in the Roche Pit already, oh, ready okay. to, to pop spells. Oh god. And now Jug has to go for an immediate TP out. That was so bad. Yeah, oh dear. now they, they can just brew fast the, the Rex, and they have nothing against it, because Global Silence is down for an eternity. 
not just an eternity, but you also have to worry about the Aegis that's now in the hands of Mineski. So you have to, ki you have to kill... Who was it? The Viper twice. I don't think the Viper is that the, the problem there. I think they could ignore the Viper and just go for Kichi Imba. As well, well as Ninja Blitz. He has some uh, satanic, so they, they have to kill two heroes twice. And I don't think they can do that. Depends if they can stunlock it. Look through it. She's got no added at all. Just sort of going in there. Hitting things. He's gonna get hit with the vault because a called him. There's a chrono spear. Is anyone dying at empty center committed? They're gonna get the kill on the silence, but he doesn't have ult anyway. Zero attitude, he has no omni slash, it's already committed. OG trying to make something play, but look at Ineski chasing after the jug who slowed, taking loads of damage. One more hit, that's gonna be Jacko finishes him up, and now this might be the push for Mineski. This could be Jack a 2 0 has victory. A buyback, and, and he has buyback. They have to. There's no way. Hang Lima is going to take this game any later if they don't go for a buyback of some sort. He has to buyback now. What, what are you doing? Why are you waiting? Oh, that was a missed borrow strike from Ninja Boogie. The Korea! Don't bring the Korea that way! It's actually got an MKB on it. Or, or parts of an MKB, I think. Brood's coming in down. Oh, I don't think Brood wants to go that way. Oh, the Korea. Ninja Boogie is sit. Why are they no, the Brood is in the mid. Oh, the Brood MKB unit. Oh, FPS drop. Could you Impa could be in trouble? Hex from OD. He, he might Kachi be Impa. dead, yeah. I think Viper's gonna have to sack his teammate. There's no way that they're gonna be able to turn. Yeah, and um, BKB is on cooldown, but still MKB on the Brood Mother should be enough. And they, they have Invoker spells up. Cold Snap is not there yet, but he should have a Deafening Blast ready. In theory, he should. Depends if there actually is a Deafening Blast. Wait for now. I mean, he used the Hex earlier. Hex has 25 seconds cooldown. <laughs> And the, the deafening gloss was just a little bit earlier, so okay, it should see. be up. Okay, can you Imba? We chase down. Yeah. And they finish him off in time. BKB deployed Satanic all the way back up, and now Stormlight gets taken out. Uh, they If they had the damage burst, they could have killed you Imba. Satanic. But they didn't have it. No, unfortunately. And now a hard for wipe because AC is not enough tanking us, right? Nope. Not at all. Not at all. State of this Invoker and Jug. Jug's, Jug is looking really strong right now. He's got loads of items, but he still can't do enough to car to outcarry Mineski X. There is a chance though, I think. If I take a look at buyback status here, there's a lot of buybacks available. Sanking just bought something, so he just took yeah, a little bit more Yeah, that's Ags for him. Ags is done. I want to see what this Ags looks like. I'm excited. When it arrives. But anyways, we have Vichy Imba pushing down the Raxes slowly and Pang Nima is just gonna slowly push him out. But no one feels comfortable to actually come anywhere near the gyrocopter. There's gonna be a cold snap zero. Actually, global silence is there. Omni Slash and Winter went for the tiniest time walk. Pops the time dilation, but he dies before he can even pop a pop a chrono skin. That Kitchen Imba turning around, having to go for a cooldown. Forest Dragons there, zero attitude stuck in place. He goes for a spin. Can they finish anything? Witch's Curse is there to keep Bun in place. OG being taken down by Jacko. One more hit. He can't, can't get it. Jacko will finish off the Invoker who turned around for some reason. What was that play? Here comes the Aegis pop. Now we've got the silence, they're trying to man fight a epicentered, uh, epicenter sanking who just sort of blinks out of there. Buyback has been thrown up by Aaron Voka. they get a kill onto Winter. Ball of the Viper, enough. but that's that's it, there's nothing else. Well, buy, buyback on Invoker, and Viper just had the Aegis, so he died and he came back anyway. And they still lost the, the lane of Rex. It's not like they, they did hold or something like that. Uh, <sighs> It was a rough engagement. I mean, they are far behind, so getting an even trade is pretty much impossible for them right now. So I don't think it it's impossible. It was the best they could do. I don't think it's impossible. It just depends if Mineski gives them, gives them an opening. If they mess up, if they don't respect Pang Lima, then Pang Lima will be able to get killed. But it's just not happening. They're showing them the right amount of respect. They're playing them as if they're equal. And the power strike rate is enormous. Doesn't connect on the zero attitude. Immediate spin. Viper is still chasing. They see Spotlight, but he's just going to go right. Or Stormlight, actually. 
Gonna go right back onto the high ground. Now OG, I think he's just screwed up. He's dead. Burrow Strike, they're gonna kill him off with the Viper. Wicked Streak on the Kachitin, but now they turn around because they pop the ultimate onto Stormlight. They kept in place with the Chrono. He's still there trying to manage why he has to go down. Spin on Jug, and he doesn't even get the TP out. He ran out of spin duration, and that's the GG call. 2-0 victory for Maneski as Pang Lima are now eliminated from the Shanghai qualifiers. Yeah, really good games by the side of Maneski. They played well and they, they deserve their win. So Did yeah, I, well. I'm excited to, to see We've got Grand Finals coming up soon. We've got another... Still happening though, right?